Weather conditions often affect walleye behavior. Up next, Fishhead's John Thielen reveals what to do when the wind focuses wandering eyes in predictable places. Man, this is one of those mornings where you come out and I've had to make adjustments right away this morning to what the plan was because what my plan was isn't going to work in this wind. There's no doubt about it. This wind is way more than what they called for and it's just ripping. And what happens is a lot of times these fish, these spring fish that were scattered, and starting to move out deep, they congregate now because the wind's blowing. So they congregate on spots versus just being scattered like they are when they're coming off the of spawning areas. And, and that's what's happening here this morning. That's a great eye to start. This fish right here, I drove around looking for fish in an area where they were scattered. I was gonna Lindy rig and they were scattered out there a couple days ago, but because of this wind, they've all changed their mode this morning. Now they're all up tight on some structure. Walleyes like that one right there, the wind changes how they feed. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how these fish will change on any given day, like a light switch. And that's usually because of weather and today, I mean, you can look back behind me here, there's a storm back there, and there's a lot of wind. It's a really strange pattern we're in. It's gonna be really volatile all week, they say. There's gonna be a lot of wind, and there's gonna be on and off storms. And what it's doing is repositioning some of these scattered fish. They're getting tighter up on structures now. Got a feeling we're gonna be able to sit right here and catch them because they were stacked up right back here. And even as I sit here, I'm seeing some fish coming underneath me. They're moving around, but they're moving around in a tight little area now. There he goes. There he is right there, got him. Feels like a pretty good one. You know, this wind, when it comes up like this, when I talk about it changing stuff, what I mean is these are spring walleyes we're fishing. And what happens is they get done with the spawn. They come off the spawn and they don't pack up. They don't, they don't move out deep together. They, they pretty much move alone. And what happens is as it warms up, these fish will get schooled up, but right now they're not, they're not really schooled up. There's no reason for it. But what the wind does is makes it so that all of a sudden these fish get pushed off of those areas. And part of the reason they're not schooled up, let me explain this first, is because when they're leaving the shallows, they'll follow structure out, but eventually they get to the end of structure and then they'll just cruise and they, they're anywhere in the basin on their way out to the next set of structures where they will pack up for a good part of the summer and feed together. But right now, usually these fish are scattered out and that's why we do a lot of Lindy rigging. That's why we do a lot of driving around looking for fish. But when the wind blows, that's the time that I switch over to what I'm doing today and I float fish because fish like this right here, they're getting pushed up toward any little structures that they can find in those basin type areas. So what we're fishing today is I'm just meandering around a rock pile here. It's, it's a small rock pile, it's nothing real big, but in here I've got sand. And what happens is those fish spawned on the sand and they're just roaming all over this sand. But all of a sudden that wind comes up, it pushes the bait up against this rock pile and here come all the fish. So here's the thing, if the wind wasn't blowing today, I might be meandering all over fishing, but what I'm, what I'm doing today is I'm fishing a pretty tight little area where these fish 
are getting corralled into a spot because the bait's getting blown into there. They wouldn't necessarily be tied up on this thing yet. The water's not warm enough. It's only 57 degrees. They'd be roaming all over yet. They're not packed up. But because of this wind today, they are, and that's why we're catching them here. Let's see if we can get right back out there and get on another one. There he goes. There he is. Got him. Looks like another good one. I think the easiest way to fish for fish when they get up on small structures like this is exactly how we're doing it today. And that's to just change your tactics to floats. You know, I was gonna come out and lend you a rig today. I was gonna, you know, I thought the wind was gonna be less. I thought I was gonna drift and I thought I was gonna have to cover ground to get to scattered fish. And a Lindy rig's a great way to do that if it's early in the year and they're not wound up and flying all over yet. Because it's, it's a slow presentation that still covers ground. But you know what? Bobber fishing, float fishing, when it comes down to it, when the fish get tighter to structure is the best way to do it because you suspend it right over the top of them. Bigger walleye, look at that. And when you suspend it right over the top of them, like you're able to do with a float, fish like this one right here, they just can't resist it. But the other thing is you're able to fish those tighter structures. Oh, got himself unhooked, look at that awesome fish. If I was drifting though with a Lindy rig, I would drift right past and it'd be over. I'd be long gone past the spot. Maybe, you know, maybe this fish never even sees the bait because you're ripping by. But that fish right there, he sees it because I hung it right over the top of him. When you hang it over the top of him like that on a tight little structure, most of the time you're gonna have a great shot at getting him to bite it. That's a good fish there, another good fish. You know, most of what's happening here, we're just getting the remnants of these storms because we're south of most of them. Most of them are up to the north. You can even hear a little thunder in the background. But you know what, there's, there's nothing unsafe about it. We're down here where the where it's just kind of a drizzle, but son of a gun, you know, it's close enough that it makes you, makes you a little nervous when you hear it booming. But we are, we are safe if we were getting to a point where I felt like, like this thing was more than just a drizzle, we'd just get off the water. See if we can find us another one. When you get it on them, I'll tell you what, they bite it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. You get it on top of them, they bite it. That one was quick. Flipped out there, and that fish was right there. Got him. Almost makes you wonder if this little bit of wind change, and all of a sudden the rain has them a little wound up. Let's see here. Get that bolt to lock in there. Feels like another pretty good fish. Show you what I'm using here, as soon as we get this fish in the boat. Oh yeah, another good eater fish. Oh geez, come here. Look at that. Boy, they're on here. They're tight on it. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be in the right spot on this structure, but if you're here, you can catch them. Hooked him right up through that snout. Awesome fish, look at that. That's cool, here's what I'm using. Phil Pro Series float, you know, we talk about it a lot. Best float on the market, hands down. Balsa, you know, the best balsa that you can use. And the idea behind it is it balances it perfect. It makes it so that when a fish bites it, he doesn't feel it, and yet I see everything happening. Okay, I use the double XL size because I use a pretty big split shot. And then down at the business end, Lindy Live Bait Jig, my favorite jig to fish under a slip float, and let me tell you why. This jig hangs horizontal, it's got a big wide gap, it's got great action down there, it'll keep that, that leech you know, swimming sideways and looking natural, and I'll tell you what, it just, it just flat out has a sharp hook that, that hooks them up every time. Man, it's gonna get wet, it's pouring all of a sudden. This is kind of one of them things where you hate to go in because the fish are biting, but you might have to take a little break. We'll just have to see here. 
We'll have to see. I don't know. Well, we had to call it. Raining too hard and there's a little bit of thunder in the south that's coming toward us, so not worth it. But I'll tell you what, what a great bite this morning. I wish you could have stayed out there a lot longer, but that's the way it goes sometimes. When you get a wind like that and you're in one of these situations where all of a sudden those scattered fish in the spring are moved because of that wind up onto those structures, just find those little structures right there in the middle of that basin type stuff where they're traveling through and you can do exactly what we did today. I'm gonna get it on the trailer. It's a good thing for good rain gear today. <laughs>